This is the first time in my professional knowledge a study of this magnitude is being conducted anywhere in the world. The Indonesia experienced massive colossal episodes of, of violence right after the end of the new order in 1999 and 2000. The primary attempt of this study is to gather uh, updated information on what has gone on since then. I think it's very smart from the government to ask us to uh, help them in knowing where exactly is conflict happening and what are the root causes of that conflict. This study has a greater chance because it's bigger um, and it's just more extensive of understanding some of the structural causes of violence in Indonesia that other studies haven't addressed. The violent conflict in Indonesia study, which we are calling vicious, has two components. First is the quantitative component, which is the building of the database. It also has qualitative component. This project is being done in collaboration with the USAID CRC program and also with the government. Conflict is actually very healthy for a democracy because it shows that it, the democracy is functional and then people are allowed to express their disagreements with the government and also horizontally with other groups. So that's a sign that democracy is functional in, an, in any political entity. But the problem begins when the conflicts start to get resolved by using violent means. And that is what we are tracking. How many violent incidents have taken place since 1998 until now? What are the death tolls, injuries, uh, rapes, etc.? What are some of the issues that people are fighting about and how? Uh, are groups clashing over identity or are mobs lynching thieves or are protests uh, turning violent? And, to track this information, we are using provincial and district level newspapers from every province. Yeah. They're just lying here like this and you know, if you're looking for something relevant, you have to take it out page by page and just go through it. And most of them are national papers, but there are some like some bundles you'll find of local papers because they haven't been arranged in you know, thinking that somebody's going to come and do research here. So you have to take out like one page by one page just to go through it and see what they have. Gather it in one place, that's what takes most of the time. After that begins the process of photographing every single page of every single edition of every single paper in the last 12 years. That's a lot of data. Satu hari kita target dalam melakukan jepretan itu adalah 1000 sampai 1500 jepretan. Lah, dalam 1000 sampai 1500 jepretan itu berarti dua kali jepret, satu kali menunduk. Nah, itu berarti uh, Satu hari itu aja, kalau sesuai dengan target, dia kita harus melakukan 500 sampai 750 proses antara duduk dan menunduk. Dan itu dibutuhkan fisik yang atlet tentunya. Ya. Pernah atlet ya? Kalian? Iya, atlet, panjat tebing. Panjat tebing. Oh gitu ya? <laughs> the archives are all uh, digitalized. When people leave the field and they put all the images on hard disks. From Papua and West Papua alone, uh, the amount of data that we got was about 500 gigabytes, 11 years of archives. Then these hard disks are brought back to Jakarta, where our partner firm has a team of data analysts who go through each and every single image of each and every newspaper that we've collected and crop out all the articles that are reporting a violent incident. The best way to do this is actually partner with, with um, with local uh, NGOs or with, uh, with local firms. The more people we can get involved in this project, we'll take ownership of this project. And the more they will be able to transfer the methodology to, uh, to other studies. As a byproduct of this project, what we are doing is preserving 12 years of Indonesia's history. If we are able to digitalize all these archives and put them in central locations, for example, the, the National Library, or even give copies of that to uh, provincial libraries, then the, the work for the researchers for any future research would be that much easier. Ini ruangan data processing JRI untuk project thesis. 
semua aktivitas mulai dari pemilihan artikel, pengisian template, kemudian cleaning data, semuanya dilakukan di ruangan ini. Some papers have better coverage in some areas. Other papers have better coverage in other areas, right? Some papers uh, might have space constraints, so today they might not report something small that happened. But the probability of the other paper suffering the same kind of constraint on the same day is kind of low. So we've kind of tried to make up for the flaws in one paper by using multiple different papers. We have a standard coding template that we use across all provinces, across all incidents, so that our data is comparable. And once that's done, it's, it goes through a process of four-level quality control. Kita memiliki beberapa orang staff quality control. Mereka akan cek kembali apakah kode yang dimasukkan itu sesuai dengan apa informasi di dalam artikel atau tidak. Nah, kalau misalnya ada beberapa informasi yang salah, maka template coding ini akan dikembalikan lagi kepada teman kepada petugas yang melakukan coding. November 2005 itu udah selesai ya, udah selesai di QC. Adon sih udah bagus, sudah 96 lah, rata-rata 96 persen udah lewat di 95 persen. Oke, berarti turun 10 persen ya? Iya. Papua pos kalau masalah. Oh, Papua. Tinggal dinaikkan aja tak hari ini lah. Gitu. Jadi saya minta yang pekerjaan kemarin. And after that, we feed it into a database that's searchable. So you choose the period, choose Maluku, all Kabupaten, right? And then, for example, you want to find out small incidents like small-scale routine violence that we talk about. So you choose that category. This is the data. Newspapers work in Indonesia. They do. We've tested it, we have evidence for it, and we're comfortable using it. Kalau kita membandingkan hasil dari sini, ada beberapa yang menarik. Satu adalah NTT yang low conflict area, jumlah korban tewas itu lebih lebih tinggi daripada yang post conflict Aceh atau post conflict Maluku Utara. Kalau kita lihat uh, mulai tahun 2003, cenderungan itu konflik besar terjadi di sini turun. Itu semua kita tahu. Tetapi sejak 2003 ada kenaikan di cenderungan uh, kasus atau insiden uh, konflik kekerasan di Maluku. No one realized that there were tensions building under the surface that steady monitoring on an ongoing basis would have picked up. And that's why the, the, the kind of monitoring that's done by the bank and other organizations is so absolutely critical. Because if you understand over time that little incidents can produce really large events, you will have more incentive to pay attention to those little incidents. The basic question here is, what kinds of violence, small-scale violence, or what quantums of small-scale violence begin to acquire a critical threshold for an explosion, right? I don't think the world of researchers has any understanding of that problem. And this project might contribute mightily. I think the raw data is useful in and of itself. And as the assumption is, and I know that it was very rigorous in the way it was done, so the assumption is that it's statistically very valid. So, I mean, it would be a shame to just waste the opportunity to analyze the data. One way in which to, to do, and that's to do that sorry, very systematically, if you like, um, is to go back to the government and say, look, here's the data, here is the analysis. You know, maybe you want to sit down and work on a future program together as how you as a government and civil society can deal with this. Yeah, it is going to be very good for us for having this kind of uh, study, not only for the government, but also for the people in Indonesia that uh, the violent uh, conflict is uh, very destructive. People taking law in their own hands can hurt the evolution and consolidation of this new uh, of democracy uh, in Indonesia. Conflict and development and conflict and rule of law, therefore, are a very important component, a vitally important component hmm, of the way we think about consolidating democracy itself in Indonesia. But what we are arguing for is that conflict is something that can be measured to a reasonable degree and that evidence should be used when trying to manage it, when trying to prevent it, when trying to develop policies to kind of deal with the impacts of it. The team is currently exploring what can be done in very practical ways. For example, with regard to training of facilitators, 
with regard to uh, complaint handling mechanisms, with regard to policies or specific mechanisms to make sure that this conflict dimension can be taken into account in the whole community development effort. What I think is really very exciting and a very uh, promising future is to see how this research can really be applied in very practical ways for uh, people on the ground. Kita sudah menyelesaikan satu tahap pekerjaan dan untuk itu saya mengucapkan terima kasih dan juga selamat kepada teman-teman semua karena tanpa kerja, kerja keras teman-teman dan terutama teman-teman QC pekerjaan ini mustahil bisa diselesaikan artinya proses tahap satu dari proyek ini sudah selesai.